Can y'all believe it? I know you can. Because once again, it's that good time to get real with Ronald E. Smith. And my guest today, let me tell you about this young man. He eats, sleeps, and breathes entertainment. Whether he be reacting to trailers and reviewing film and TV shows on his YouTube channel, or you can catch him on his Instagram making his box office list, rankings, or chilling out and having a good live discussion with the community that he's built. The only person I could be talking to is the man from St. Louis, Elliot Collins, a.k.a. Movie Files. How are you? Hello, man. I'm good, man. That was uh, the best intro I've ever heard, man. I appreciate that, man. I'm doing good. How are you? <clears throat> doing good, man. Look, over here in, in NYC, you know, it's a little it's a little cold, but I'm surviving it somehow. I hope you're doing better than, than me. <laughs> it's it's already out, out here in Missouri. It's not as bad as it is in New York, which I've actually lived there for a little bit of a time. But uh, no, nah, it's not bad out here. It's just, I can't complain. I can't complain. And now we, y'all, as you know, I'm getting real. We love the with our guests. We love to get know the real them, understand them from the outside of their work. Yeah. So, Elliot, let's just start off from the beginning for yourselves, man. Let's just start from the beginning with you, because we only know you from your channel, Movie mm-hmm. Files. So, but let's, where did this all begin with you in the beginning? Who who was Elliot? So, uh, I mean, I guess we can kind of start with just my kind of my love for film and entertainment and, and TV shows. It, it dates back to just being, honestly, man, the only child uh and and pretty having a pretty small family uh growing up it's just you know you got to find something to do you know you can't just play with the toys uh you know growing up all the time in the video games so you know looking at tv shows back in the day from you know watching will smith watching martin lawrence watching some of my favorite cartoons growing up reading comics uh to getting a little bit older and watching the big screen movies from you know seeing star wars for the first time seeing indiana jones or jumping into the matrix you know it's just Started young, man. Again, when you're an only child, you got to find some things to keep yourself busy. So that's where film and and TV shows really kind of came about. And, you know, in high school, you know, wanted to explore more into the the film verse. So went to a, you know, took a film course in high school and and, and got my uh, motion picture degree in in college. And, you know, haven't really used that degree for anything in the filmmaking aspect. I've done a couple student films, but... You know, I'm I'm loving the YouTube thing. I'm loving the Instagram, like you said, building a community, talking to people about the things we love uh, in regards to movies and film and and, and TV shows. So start a young man and uh, I'm still loving it and and, and, and enjoying what I'm doing every day, man, with the with the film entertainment talk. Now, okay, you you said that this began with yourself, you know, at at a young age. Mm -hmm. But while you were growing up as an only child, do you think that also help you get like it lost in the world of entertainment you know what i mean like that really just like grasped grasped you yeah man i mean it's uh you know as cliche as it may be you know i i do feel you know engrossed or in you know and injected into this universe whatever film i'm watching i'm a big sci-fi fantasy guy i love me some horror i love me some comedy action but you know it, it is like i say it is pretty cliche but i am in, in, injected in that universe and it kind of takes you away from whatever not you know not having a crazy childhood growing up but it takes you it helps you escape from whatever you got going on whether that be you know keeping yourself busy whether that be stuff going on at home at work at school whatever the case may be you know watching movies kind of really does transport me to whatever universe whatever galaxy whatever you know uh setting that we're in, in, invested in whatever film or tv show i'm watching so it definitely kind of helped in, in regards to uh putting me in a different reality for sure so while in school were you known as like the movie tv show guy or did you have other things going on with yourself yeah no actually growing up more into sports uh you know basketball and football and my a couple of my best friends we would you know after those activities whether it be basketball practice or basketball games or football we would watch movies and, and watch shows but i wasn't really known as the guy that knows everything about movies or tv shows more or less as sports and just pop culture things i was big into music growing up really not so much now but uh definitely um was a little bit more involved in the sports and, and things like that when uh you know when i was in high school so then when you're 
on your own, because like you said, you brought up like Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. Because look, I, mm-hmm. people know that me. I, I got into uh, Fresh Prince well, well late into the game. But mm-hmm. those, were, those were the kind of shows that only a, a certain amount of people, which is I'm, I'm talking about the black community, can only understand of the things that are brought up in those shows. Mm-hmm. So did you feel that whenever you you caught those shows, did you feel that it connected with you personally? Yeah, definitely, man. I think of, uh, you know, every, every episode, well, the particular episode with Will Smith always goes back to the one with him and his dad, because I actually have a personal connection with that episode, because I, ne- I never grew up with his dad, and had that uh, moment in my, kind of my teenage life when he kind of popped up and, and spent time with each other for for a couple summers, and then he kind of disappeared again. So those, you know, episodes like that really resonated with me, and seeing Will Smith kind of transitioning from coming up from Philadelphia to becoming who he is today, or during that time, one of the biggest stars on the earth. Uh, with Independence Day and Bad Boys and all this stuff. So there was definitely some uh, a personal connection with shows like that. Martin Lawrence, Will Smith, and other shows in that genre, uh, especially in the black community, that, that really resonated with me, especially, like I said, that Will Smith episode. I'll, I'll never forget, uh, you know, the episode when his dad came back in town and kind of sparked a little bit of life in Will Smith and kind of left him on the, on the back burner in the back of the episode. So it definitely kind of hit home for me. It was a rough episode. I I remember that as yesterday. Like it hit hit me mm-hmm. home a lot hard. See, like with that, then you know when people say that they get that itch, you know, sometimes later on in their lives when they find that spark of inspiration for their careers and goals, mm-hmm. and you've always liked it. But do you remember the time, if it wasn't school, like, or probably when you graduated, that spark of like, man, I kind of like like love talking about this genre probably honestly uh it was probably my i want to say either my sophomore or junior year actually for for about two years i actually lived with a best friend of mine so i was actually out of my living outside i don't want to say myself because his mom and his sister was there but i wasn't with my mom and, and the people i grew up with probably at the age of like 15 16 so me and him my, my best friend adam we would uh we would analyze films we, would, we wouldn't do any reviews, like technical review writing or videos or anything of that nature, but we will watch watch movies in his basement. And after that, just kind of break the movie down. And that was just fun conversations to have. And then once we kind of had those conversations, even when I would watch a movie without him, I would start analyzing things on my own. And, you know, fast forward to my senior year, I actually had, I started not movie files. It was just a YouTube channel on my own that I would review movies and TV shows and, and did that for a couple of years and kind of died down while I was in college and, as of what three and a half years ago, I picked it up again. So uh, definitely, like I said, going back to my my junior and se- sophomore year, when me and my best friend want to analyze films like Saw, because again, I'm a big horror fan, or Halloween, or you know the Michael Myers franchise, things of that nature. We would actually break it down, and from there, just kind of stuck on as far as just kind of looking at film and uh, not by any means I'm not a, call myself a critic, but looking at films in a critical. Uh, sense where you can pick out, you know, what the direction was, what the themes and the topics and, you know, character breakdowns kind of came into place. And then going into college studying film, that's where it became a little bit more, okay, this is something I actually really enjoy and love. You can see myself doing, um, you know, as a hobby, and who knows where it can lead, uh, you know, from, from where I'm at now. See, okay, right right there, because, yeah, because like, just like you, a lot of people who think about uh, YouTube would be a reviewers, you know, commentators, or even the quote unquote critics too, it normally starts up as a hobby. Mm-hmm. So what was then, if you could, if you could, cause you said that you, you went to college for a motion picture degree. Now, was that the only degree you went for or was there something else behind it just in case for as a backup? No, it was, uh, you know, I went for, I went to a really good community college out in, uh, I'm actually from Chicago land area. So I went to college name, uh, College of the Page. And I just went oh, for just my associate's degree. Yeah, just went to get my associate's degree, but then it turned into, again, like I said, the, the, i just a big fan of film. Uh, so I wanted to actually get my motion picture, which I actually did get. And again, it was kind of, you know, as we all know, when we go to college, it's kind of like you go to school to, to do what you want to do, and you end up not actually necessarily doing that degree. But I've always, even when I didn't necessarily join D, so like a DP on a film set or, you know, in the film world. I still watch movies. I still watch TV shows, but I actually kind of went on the other side as far as my professional career, got in more into retail and, and management and stuff like that. But, um, you know, to answer your question in regards to, you know, the passion and everything, it's just something that I can see now, at, you know, fast forward 10 years later that I actually want to dive deeper into this film versus see what I can do with it from all the knowledge I know from behind the scenes 
And then, like I said, using the stuff that I know from a um, you know critical standpoint, maybe turning it into something uh, into a career, maybe one day sooner rather than later. How does how does your family take that when they hear of what you wanted to do? Because sometimes you know, families they, they yeah. don't agree with it. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, luckily, you know, I have uh, again, I have a really small family. It was just growing up, and it was my mom and my grandmother, and I, of course, I have cousins and, and nieces and nephews and all that stuff. But not, I don't have a huge family. So honestly, my mom was an only child, and and she really didn't go to college for anything. So it was just like anything I wanted to do was just uh, you know a blessing in her eyes in regards to just staying in the educational uh, standpoint and just continuing to learn and, and and you know doing things that make me passionate and happy. So it was never any uh, defiance for my for my family in regards to going to school to to figure out what I wanted to do. They they were there to support me, and and plus too, honestly. I, I paid for my own college, so it wasn't a matter of them kind of going against the grain and, and you know, I'm paying for school. You got to be a doctor or a lawyer. It was never the case. So, you know, it was money out of my pocket. So it was definitely something that I, was, you know, what I really wanted to do, uh, even if they were uh, not on, on board with my decisions with school. So, And, you know, and that's the most important thing, because, you know, sometimes in this world, it can get lonely, you know, like especially if you mm-hmm. don't have the core belief of the family because look i i can tell you something and it can just wipe off your chest you know it's not that big of a deal but it's a difference when it comes from the moms you know like it, mm-hmm. it hits a little bit more harder you know what i mean so to have their support means a lot more definitely definitely so then so then like again i'm speaking with movie files elliot collins i also see that you also do real estate you know yeah yeah so, so with that how do you balance that? How do you balance with your job over here with real estate and then over here with your hobby or your career, your other career with you? Mm-hmm. So that goes back to the whole college thing, you know, went to school to go for film and, and TV and entertainment, but actually went into the career force into sales and management, stuff like that. So that's always been for whatever reason, it, it probably dates back to me being growing up in the sports uh, kind of competitive feel. Uh, I'm, I'm always, when it comes to sales, I always want to be number one. So that's always been something that's been on my mind. And, you know, I worked in, uh, for Best Buy for over 10, Best Buy, Target, and some other retail places, H.H. Griggs, for about 10, 12 years uh, from high school all the way into, you know, my mid-20s. And always exceeded, you know, whatever expectations were given upon me as, an, as a sales employee and then growing into management. So it's always been something that's been, there is that sales mindset or being the number one, trying to hit goals, trying to help as many people as I possibly can. But at the same time, you know, working your nine to five, whatever the case may be, that's where the film world came in. So after work, after a long 10, 15 hour day, go home, watch movies, watch shows, you know, oh, weekends, oh, super busy. Oh, I know, be tiring. So, yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's where I kind of sat back and relaxed and catch up on my, on my movies and shows after work. So to answer your question about real estate, it was just something of, again, I've been working for other companies and, and working for other bosses for, you know, 10, 10, 12 years. So I was just like, you know what, I want to be my own boss. So in 2016 or 2015, actually, um, decided to, at that time I was living in uh, Iowa, decided to move to St. Louis, Missouri, uh, kind of closer to home. Um, so, and, and want to jump into real estate. So you know, 2016, moved to St. Louis, Missouri, not having a friend or family out here in the Missouri area and, and joined a real estate brokerage. And fast forward to four years later, uh, last year, have had one of my most successful years in real estate thus far. And it's, it, it's tough as to answer your question in regards to balancing that, that work and, and uh, entertainment and, and hobby life. It, it's definitely tough, but the beauty of real estate is I kind of make my own hours. So it's just a matter of finding those pockets, finding those days, make sure I don't have showings or open houses on certain days to, you know, kind of fill in that slot. So when I have early screenings or if it's a, a Netflix show premiering on Friday, try to wake up and watch it that morning and, and maybe have some, some uh, work stuff to do that evening. So it's definitely, uh, you know, the, the scheduler on my, on my phone is definitely uh, implementing a lot of my life in, in regards to getting everything planned out properly. Especially with the binging on Netflix, I mean, like, man, like, I, it, it, it may take me like a not even a weekend, like a couple of days to finish one show, like, but for yeah. you, man, like, thank on it. Yeah, I try to, I try to get through it, man. Again, I, I take this uh, anything I do, I, I try to take it as seriously as possible. And, and you know, the first couple of years for movie files, I would review, you know, as many movies as I saw. I didn't review as many TV shows because, again, like you just mentioned, it can be hard to watch a show on a, on a weekly basis or on a binge basis, but you know, just like I said, when it comes to just want to do 
the best I possibly can and, and growing the community because I have such a fun time interacting with people like you and, and other people I've met on, on this platform, YouTube and, and Instagram and Twitter. So I just, you know, a couple, probably, honestly, I've been doing movie files for going on three years now. Last October, I really saw, you know what, I, I said to myself, every new movie I get a chance to see, every TV show, I'm going to watch it, I'm going to review it, share my thoughts with the community, and uh, hopefully build something big here. So that's kind of where we're at. Now, see, that drive that you said that you always you always push to be number one, but, you know, and, and sometimes with that, it also comes with that not being able to stop yourself mm-hmm. to take a break. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. sometimes you might crash because you're you're over pressuring yourself mm-hmm. to not to, to always reach the top. When sometimes you're like, yeah, I got to just breathe for a second because I'm then I'm going to burn myself out. Has that ever right. happened to you? Um, honestly, not really. So by, by the top for me, it's not necessarily having, uh, I mean, it would be nice one day to have a, you know, a million plus subscribers and, and you know, a million followers or whatnot. But for Who me, man, honestly, I know, right. Honestly, for me, the, the being on top for me is just my happiness is on top. So me interacting with you today is something that I'm, I'm extremely excited about. I'm extremely proud of to be able to meet someone on one of these platforms, have an interview with them, break it all down, kind of talk about life and stuff that we love. And that to me is kind of being on top is reaching out to people and being able to speak to people about the things that we love. So yes, you know, the work that you put in, obviously the numbers might show that, but it's really the conversations I have with everyone. And uh, I, I comment, I respond to every comment on all my YouTube videos, Instagram posts, Things of that nature means the world to me that people take the time out of their day to read a, uh, my, my box office breakdown or my thoughts on a certain movie news on my Instagram page or, like I said, watch a 10-minute, 15-minute review of the latest show on Netflix or the latest movie at the big, on the big screen. So that, to me, is kind of the successfulness to where I'm at now. But obviously, the more I do it uh, and, and if I continue to grow you know, my, my, my channel with the great people that I'm interacting with, I, then obviously those numbers will come later on. But right now, I couldn't be happier where, where things are at right now in regards to the interaction I have on a day-to-day basis with the community. talk with Elliot Collins of Movie Files. If you love what he's talking about and you want to see more of his work, go check his YouTube, at Movie Files. And if you want to see the breakdowns, you want to chat with him on Instagram and all the great, amazing things he does on Instagram, also, at Movie Files on Instagram. Check it out. Now, let's go with your YouTube. You said you started three years ago. Mm -hmm. Where did it come from? So uh, it's a, back in, um, man, I want to say it was probably 2010 to 2012. I had my own this channel. I don't even remember the name of it. Honestly, it's probably just my name. Uh, and, I, and like I said, I would just review whatever was out, whether it was a movie I was watching on TV, Blu-ray, or if they do that time, DVD, uh, or if it was, uh, you know, watching something on TV, I would just review it. And didn't really get too much traction, but it was just something I had fun with doing. Because, again, I love expressing myself and talking about the things that I love. So did that for about two years, but just wasn't uh, as invested in it as I am now. So, again, it would be a review maybe on a, a Friday, but then you might not hear from me for another two or three weeks or a month or so. So it started back then about eight years ago. But three years ago, it really kind of hit home with me because I was really, again, with real estate. It was just like sometimes you're not as busy as you would like to be uh, with the market. So, you know, when I would, during those slow times, I would be watching movies, watching shows. So I was just like, you know what? I need to bring my channel back uh, and, and try to do it as, you know, try to be committed to it, a little bit more committed to it than I was previous on uh, my previous channel. So, you know, 2016, I, I remember the first uh, movie I reviewed was It, Chapter One, because uh, my YouTube channel for Movie Five started in September. And from there, you know, reviewed <laughs> TV shows like FX, American Horror Story, uh, the Walking Dead. I can't remember what season it was during that time. I think it was season seven, maybe. It's been a long, uh, long season, man. Yeah, yeah. So from there, it's just been a, a a weekly grind, man. You you can catch me every week talking about whatever movies out at the theater, uh, whatever thing is streaming on Netflix, Hulu, uh, you know, HBO, or whether it be Disney Plus. So I haven't looked back since 2016 and on. I've just been grinding away, man, trying to put out as much content uh, as possible to uh, interact with all the fun people out there in the community. Now, see, 
right there because like you just said there's a grind especially with the way youtube works you know sometimes mm -hmm. you know the, the most work you put on one video doesn't get them much traction but oh, the yeah. one reaction you do over here or that one video like ah, i did a good job but but not the best i know i could have but that one like mm -hmm. steams up and makes way more viewers so it, it, it sometimes can be a headache because you're like oh, i don't yeah. know what the people want you know so how do you how do you put yourself into it when you're like throwing darts in, in a wall and find to find something that sticks that's a great question man i mean obviously it, it, it hits home again i'm not i'm not doing it for a sense of fame or getting money or anything of that nature if that comes with the process and obviously i was at the cherry on top but it, it, it's a bit frustrating when you have a, a, a video that you put time and effort in you, you, you spend 10 15 minutes writing up a you know a comprehensive script to what you want to say to express your feelings so it doesn't come off as like rambling when you're uh, uh, reviewing something or breaking something down and then you shoot the video and and you know i i, I commend the people that do the blooper videos because I, I, I might be one one of these days it takes <laughs> you about 10 to 15 times to get things right and get the angles right and get the lighting right so you do that and then you edit it, and then you put all your stuff, and you post it on everything, and then you, you get the results back. And it can, like you said, it could be hit or miss. Uh, but the biggest thing that for me is definitely, like I said, for me, honestly, I, I remember the date. It was most. It was in October. You know, again, I was kind of hitting that stride where I was getting hits and misses, hits and misses, and it kind of it kind of hits you sometimes in, uh, in your feel. So I was just like, you know what? From here on out, no matter what's going on, I'm just going to continue to put content out, and I'm going to find, you know, find the niche, find because that's the biggest thing about YouTube is there's so much out there. There's so much social media as a, as a platform. There's so much attention spans. People can go here, watch you say something wrong, and, and for 10 seconds of your video, they're onto something else. So for me, it was just like, you know what? I'm just going to find my niche. I'm going to review things that I have passion about and, and love for, and interested in. and. You know, honestly, the biggest thing that I'm finding a lot of traction on is, is TV. You know, I talk about it all the time when I try to go live on Instagram. A lot of my my time and resources and energy goes into TV. So, and, and, I, and don't get me wrong, I love cinema. I will always be a, cine, a cinephile and, and buying the new releases and going to the movies as much as possible. But people love talking about TV. So, again, we were talking about it earlier about binging. You know, I... I I love talking about TV, watching Stranger Things, Game of Thrones, you know, all those fun shows. So it's, uh, I, I'm kind of finding my, my lane now in regards to a lot of people seem to like a lot of my reviews when I break down, you know, these shows that we love to talk about. It's and you see right in, like you brought up about binging, like especially with TV, because if you, if you feel your, your lane right now is TV shows, there's so much streaming shows, you know what I mean? Like so many streaming services out there, it's crazy. And so for you, it has to be annoying trying to get it even get half of them to get those big upcoming shows up and get and just to talk about them. How do you mm -hmm. try to balance that? Uh, it's it's you know what man, it's it's a matter of this. Um, so first again, I, I try to find I try to review as much as I can, but I do want to review things that I actually have interest in because it's nothing worse than reviewing something that you're not too fond of or, or it's interested a lot in. Harder. So, it makes it a lot harder, that's for sure. There's definitely times when I watch movies and be like, well, that was a complete waste. But anyway, <laughs> when it comes to shows, man, I, I, you know, I try to do some research in regards to who's, who's the screenwriter, or, I mean, who's the, the showrunner, who's starring in it, what's the, the subject matter. And when all those things kind of line up perfectly for me, it just makes the process a little bit easier. So, again, you can watch, like, last week, what did I watch? Uh, uh, Netflix's uh, Sex Education season two came out, and it was a show that I really, really enjoyed. So that they, eight hours seemed more like you know two hours, and, and on honesty, because I'm so invested into the storylines and the characters, and it makes it go by so much easier. And then when it comes to the review and everything, it just makes it again makes it easier because you're invested into everything. So it just makes uh, the process uh, uh, a little bit easier for those things that aren't too uh, up my alley in regards to interest. So, but then like. I know you, you say that, you know it makes it a lot easier when you're enjoying something rather than watching for it like it, like it's homework. Mm. But do, do you also then try your best to like say okay I'm not gonna go on this streaming service like for example HBO Max is gonna come out what next year maybe so like are you, are you gonna be like nah I, I can't go on that because honestly I don't have the money I'm paying for this I'm paying for that I can't afford all this stuff because then I'm just gonna go broke. Well, so luckily, um, I am uh, again with real estate. I'm, I'm I'm doing a pretty good job in that lane. So the finance, especially nowadays, these new services they're pretty pretty decent in pricing. Like uh, Disney Plus uh, is what forty nine a month. 
Uh, I got when I bought my iPhone, it came with a year uh, of Apple TV Plus. I, I review a lot of those Ooh. Apple TV Plus shows. So and then and then with Netflix and everything, you know, I've had those for years. So I've, I've you know, I, I try to sit down and look at my finances and pick you know the stuff that you know is a priority as far as bills and everything. And then you know, try to get some stuff in the entertaining in the entertainment uh, uh, lane there. With uh, you know, I have AMC uh, a, a a list where I can go see films. Uh, at least three times a week and things like that. So I definitely try to prioritize what, you know, main things with bills and everything, but I also try to throw on some entertainment things. So you know, I already have HBO. So and if I'm not mistaken, I think if you already have HBO, it kind of rolls into whatever subscription yes. you already have. But in regards to where I'm at now, I think I have, you know, Netflix. Again, I have HBO, Disney Plus. Hulu, uh, which I actually use my um, a friend of mine's, uh, you know that that helps too. When you have friends that have the other services and they, yeah, you know what it is, yes. Passwords. So, you know, a couple of those services I have, uh, you know, have the hook up there with some friends. So, uh, yeah, man, that's how, that's how we do it. You know, we do, we try to find uh, as many helpings as possible when it comes to these streaming services. But at the same time, I you know I have a pretty good amount of them that I pay for on a, on a month to month basis. I'm talking with Elliot Collins, Movie Files. Now. You know, you say that, you know, you don't call yourself a critic, you know, mm -hmm. but in a way, with someone from the outside that looks at your stuff, follows your, follow your channel, they might think you are, you know, because you also, but you, you also do, you know, reactions, you know, you do trailer mm -hmm. reactions. So for yourself, then, if you don't call yourself a critic, then for you, what do you call yourself? A fan of, of entertainment, man. Like you said, a commentator. Um, you know, someone that just wants to commentate on the things I love and, and, and appreciate and, and can see. Because again, in college, I, I've made a couple student films in my, in, in my time, and, and I know how much it goes into making a movie. And you know, that's why if you ever watch a review of mine, I try to, you know, I be as honest as possible. But at the same time, I try to say as many positive things as possible about whatever I'm watching because I know how much hard work goes into whatever I'm watching on the TV screen, on the big screen. And, and I know no one intentionally tries to make something bad. So, you know, when it comes to me commentating on things, you know, I always try to find as many positive things as possible. But again, I, I, I'm not a critic, but I, I do consider myself, as, like you had mentioned earlier, we're, we're commentators. We're commentating on the things that we love and enjoy. And I just want to put my two cents into the conversation. So then since you have like a good background on how these things are put together, when you see a, a film get like heavy backlash from not even the film yet, but the trailer, and you mm -hmm. see fans on Twitter, on Instagram, like going after the people that work on it, how do you feel about that? Like, how, how do you take all that in? You know, honestly, I, tr I try not to uh, allow it to affect my day-to-day -day life. But again, you know, we're fans of this stuff. I grew up with a lot of these franchises. And, then, you know, obviously you want people to celebrate the things you love. But, you know, I'm thinking of a franchise right now like Star Wars. You know, it's, yeah. I, it's, it's a franchise I've been growing up with since I was a kid. And, you know, I, I've seen the highs and lows. And, and also I, I've, I've done the research in school. I, you know, I used to look up George Lucas as, you know, doing a – a paper on him and stuff like that. I mean, the Star Wars fandom, even though it seems like it's crazy and so cocky right now, which it definitely is, and it might be the worst it's ever been before, but it's honestly always been like that. Remember, I've, I didn't grow up in the 70s or 80s, obviously, but if, if, if people look at reviews, people did not necessarily love Star Wars growing up in regards to Empire Strikes Back might be revered as the best Star Wars film to date, but when it came out to the critical audience and to the, the mass audience, it wasn't a big hit in regards to some of the critical uh, responses, and obviously... We know what happened in the prequels, right. but you know you look at you look at how the the, the fandom is now. You, those original OG uh, uh, movies are revered to be the best of the franchise, and now people that grew up with the prequels are loving that, loving those three prequels. And right now, the J.J. Abrams Ryan Johnson trilogy is kind of looked at as a kind of a mess, and Kathleen Kennedy doesn't know what she's doing, and Bob Iger is, doesn't know what's going on right now in the franchise. But I guarantee, in about ten to fifteen years, people are gonna gonna gobble up with what we got in this last uh, this last trilogy. So again, I don't try to take it as personally as, as some people do when they make these videos. And to each his own, because I know there's a lot of successful channels out there that you know I don't want to say feed off the negativity, but you know they they talk about the the fandom, they talk about the bad things that's going on in Star Wars, and they get the clicks, they get the clickbait titles uh, and all that stuff. Them. Yeah, yeah, but for me, man, like I said, it's it's something that I talk about on my whenever I go live. I try to talk about these topics, and I might incorporate that on my YouTube channel one day to kind of cover more of the TV and movie news on a on a video basis. But 
Um, you know, again, it doesn't affect me personally going into a film, uh, regardless of what the critics are saying or the audience is saying or how the trailer is, re- you know, uh, how the response to the trailer was. If I'm interested in something and, and if I'm invested in it, if I like a certain creator or an actor or an actress, I'm going to give it a, a shot regardless of what the, uh, the response is from the, the mass audience. So speaking of negativity, then, how have you dealt with negativity on your own social platforms? Again, I, I don't take it personally, man, because, again, if, if you're not harming me uh, in, in the real world, I guess you want to call it that, if you're not affecting me, uh, you know, on a personal level or, or attacking any one of my family or friends, then it's all just, you know, I, I, I put myself out there. And, and that's what I hope to get. You know, I, I want responses, whether it be good or bad. I want feedback. Sometimes, obviously, you get stupid comments and that is it, it kind of territory. But at the, at the end of the day, if, if they're not affecting me personally, uh, emotionally, financially, they're not affecting any one of my family or friends, and it's just like, it's just white noise, you know, I just kind of ignore it. So, uh, and, and honestly, man, I could be 100% honest with you, I, I don't really get as much negative stuff as I know some of my other peers get in the in the YouTube space, and in the Instagram space, especially like female uh, uh, commentators or critics, we get a lot get of hard. flack from, yeah, from the, the male audience and, and sometimes the female audience. And of course, you know, being, you know, black, you know, sometimes there's a lot of negativity and that's that sense, you know, uh, from minorities. So honestly, man, I'm fortunate enough to not get as much uh, negative response as I know some of my peers do. Uh, but, you know, like I said, when I do get it, I just kind of brush it off. And you see, and, and, and that is a lot for some people that don't have that, you know, that strength. Uh, and that positivity that you have because usually whenever I see your videos I see your Instagram posts you, the one thing about you and it's the one thing I do respect about you, you you're always full of like positivity and it, I, I always wonder too like where did that all come from like who has given you that belief of this um probably just kind of growing up I mean uh I, I was really close to my uh, my grandmother who was just you know just a, a beacon of hope and just a, a wonderful wonderful person and she's always she was always someone that kind of taught me just you know if you if you got the opportunity to wake up every morning put your pants on one leg you know walk out of the house do whatever you love to do go to school go to work whatever the case may be have family and friends then there's really nothing it takes more energy to be negative than it does to be positive so you know, I always kind of looked at it that way, man. If I got the opportunity to wake up every morning and, uh, you know, walk, talk, breathe, eat, sleep, interact with people, then it's, you know, it's just, it's just being positive is, is, like I said, a lot more easier than being negative. So I definitely learned that from her. And, and, and like I said, when it comes to me reviewing films, again, I know when I watch, I watch a lot of YouTubes. I, I listen to your videos. I watch a lot of my peers out there. And, it, it, you know, I know it takes a lot to put this content out. So when I do it, I always look at it as, you know, someone's getting off work. Someone's, you know, getting out of school. Someone just had a, you know, some some bad news, some good news, whatever the case may be. All I can do for them is just, you know, give them my honest opinion, but at the same time, bring a certain energy and a certain vibe that it makes them want to watch and interact with me and comment on my videos and stuff like that. And that's all I really want to do is just, you know, reach someone in regards to, man, that's even though I disagree or agree with whatever my, my comments are or about the, the movie or TV show, I just want to be, you know, like I said, as real as possible, but at the same time be as, you know, as positive as possible because there's so much, you know, negativity out there uh, in our day-to-day lives that I try to bring as much positive energy as I can. If you can remember, do you know anyone from YouTube that really inspired you to be like, hey, I, want, I, I can do, do that too? Um, you know, I, I've, I've, I watch the big channels, you know, I watch the Chris Stuckman's of the world, Jeremy Johns, uh, and, you know, I, I used to watch Collider a lot before they got the act a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and it, you know, honestly, it just comes, it just comes with just the idea of this, not necessarily like, oh, I can do it better than they can. It's just a matter of, you know what, I want to have my, my two cents into the conversation as well. You know, I love talking about the fandom stuff, the Star Wars, the DC, the Marvel, talk about the TV shows. So it's just a matter of, uh, just joining the conversation. Uh, and, and then obviously I watch a lot of a lot of my peers. Like I watch, you know, I listen to your videos. I watch, you know, I follow a lot of people on Instagram that I just love what they're doing. I love the energy that they put in their post and the, and the, the time and effort they put in their post. So it's just a matter of uh, not uh, um, being better than someone or, or doing it better than they can. It's just I just want to be a part of the conversation. And, you know, and I, I always believe that because in the and it's it's a, it's a normal human thing to be to look at your peers and feel competitive but also too it's a great feeling of being you know feeling of that yeah i want to do just as good as him because it's mm-hmm. giving you that drive to push forward because mm-hmm. you know all like you just said before all of us 
are working. All of us are in school. All of us are dealing with our own thing. But and seeing each uh, one of us support each other and push us makes us want to grind harder. You know, I, mm-hmm. I believe energy creates more positive energy in the work. So I, I always look at that whenever I see you do your thing. I'm like, yeah, Elliot's killing it. Uh, I'm going to kill it, too. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's that it's that is that grit drive to keep going and going and going. So right. I respect right. that about you, man. I appreciate it, man. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at your grind, too, man. I know when it comes to the to the voice uh, voiceover and, and getting into that field is, is, is a grind. But I know once you get in, man, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful industry to be a part of. Uh, it, ain't, ain't it, it ain't easy, but nothing in life is. But, you know, I, only person that can stop me is myself. So I, I already know about yeah. that. Thank you, man. Yeah, and, yeah. I, you know, guys, I'm having a great conversation with Elliot right now. But the one thing I did want to bring up, too, man, because, hey, look, man, I don't know if people – can't see it, or maybe they just close their eyes for a bit and they don't notice it. You know, we some we some African American guys, some black guys, mm-hmm. and especially in the <laughs> the review, critic, reaction, movie commentary the sphere, there's not a lot of us here, mm-hmm. you know. And sometimes I always say that whenever our peers talk about some things, I always feel that they don't get it. And when I say that, it's not to be mean, but it's more of that there's some topics when you talk about and you hear it, you're like, I get what you're talking about, but you don't understand it. It's either you get it or you don't get it. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had to deal with that at your own whenever you see someone talk about a movie and they just don't under- really get about why this topic is what it is? Yeah, I mean, uh, and it, it goes to, um, you know, obviously in, in, in our community and, and uh, you know, the black community, but, you know, anyone, you know, I can see, I, I watch a lot of reviews and I get a lot of people's, uh, you know, because uh, I love, again, I love being a part of the conversation. So I look at other people's thoughts on certain things. And even though I might not, you know, I might not agree with their thoughts are, or sometimes I, I'm like, oh, that's a different take on what I, what I took from a certain film or whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, you know, if they're if if they're passionate about it and they feel like they're whatever they're saying is, is is truth in their eyes, and you know, all I can do is just give them a thumbs up, give them a comment, and just say like I just said, oh, you know, I didn't look at it that way, but you know, I appreciate you putting out your video or your post or whatever the case may be, and uh, you know, hopefully, you know, I look forward to seeing some more content from you. But when it comes to you know, when people don't get in certain things, I just be like, hey, that's that's their take on the situation, that's their take on the on the commentary or the the topic or the theme. And, you know, I, I might not agree with it, but, uh, you know, it, it, it is what it is. And just kind of, you know, take it, um, you know, as, you know, they put the time and effort in, in putting out the content. So it might not hit with me, but, you know, I always appreciate the people that uh, take the time to, to try to put their voice out there, I guess. And with that, too, we touched, we touched on this for a bit, but it's more fully for you about it. When the days do come for you, when you feel, you know, just down. You know, mm-hmm. when you feel that, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to review this. Oh, I don't want to edit this. I'm, 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 you fully hit the wall. Mm-hmm. You fully just spent, you know, who do you have to pick you up? Who is always there to push you forward, to keep you going when you can? Um, you know, I, I try to lean on, uh, myself as much as I can, man, as, uh, as, uh, cliche as it may sound, man, like you said, you, you know, we're, all, we're our own worst critics. So whenever I have those down moments, I always say, well, what would the Elliot that wasn't in this moment or in this mode or in this particular thought process, what would he do if he was on the opposite side? He would continue to push, push, push forward. So it's always great to have a a sense of inspiration for someone, but I always try to, I I try to always be myself. So I always try to be better than my last, you know, my last video or my last comment or my last whatever case may be. So I always try to lean on that person that I know is already there that has the capabilities to succeed in whatever I'm doing. So, uh, again, I don't want to sound pompous or, or cocky about it, but I always nah, try man, to you lean on myself. You. It's okay. Yeah, uh, I always try to lean on myself when it comes to those down, down moments because it was, it was who, who put myself there. It was myself. Who's going to get myself out of it? Myself. So I always try to lean on, uh, like I said, try to put myself in that thought process of when I am not in that mood, what was I like when I was, you know, pumping out good content or feeling good about certain, certain things. I try to get back in that mindset as quickly as possible whenever I am in those uh, those down moments or whenever I hit that wall. I'm, I'm talking with Elliot Collins, a.k.a. from Movie Files. And we sat down. We had a good convo, man. We talked a lot about yourself. You opened yourselves up to me and to, the, to your fans about who you are. And the last 
bit things I have for you before I let you go, and again, I thank you for giving me a time to speak with you, is one, if there is someone who wants to do what you're doing, what inspiration could you give them to tell them, yeah, go ahead, try it for yourself. You might like this. Honestly, it comes down to, um, you know, if you want your voice to be heard, uh, male, female, black, white, uh, teenager, and adult, midlife, uh, point in their life and age. If you, if you want to be a part of the conversation, you feel like you can contribute to the conversation in, um, you know, whatever matter it may be. Again, I know there's some people that like to talk about the negative things, and that's their prerogative, but there's some people that want to bring some, some positivity, what things meant to them personally, how that affected them. Just go ahead and put the content out there. You know, you will find an audience. You will, you're, you will find your voice in, in the mix of all the, the voices out there and, and on the different platforms. And again, if you have the passion for it, you have, uh, you know, you're excited about the content, whatever that may be, TV, movies, books, uh, uh, reviewing food, reviewing clothes, shoes, whatever the case may be. If you're passionate about it, you want your voice to be heard and just keep pushing through it. Again, the numbers will come, the views will come, the comments will come, the likes will come, but it's just a matter of first, you've got to be in a spot where you feel comfortable putting yourself out there, whether it be on a, on a camera day to day or whether it be audio. Uh, whether it be vlogging, uh, whatever the case may be, if you if you have the the passion about that particular topic, man, just keep pushing forward, and you will find you will find your people. That's the beauty about and there's a gift and a curse about social media. Uh, obviously, we know about the negative things. There's uh, there's people that 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 say a lot of hateful things out there, of but course. if you can find the, the 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 group of people that have that share the same you know thought process as you and the same interest in you. Then that's that's enough, and it just continues to build because you're gonna find people that find you know the same things that you love and they have just as much passion uh, about that particular subject as you do, and it just like I said makes the day to day life a little bit easier when you can find that person out there that you can connect to. So again, just find your people, keep grinding. Uh, those views, those likes, those comments will come. Just keep doing whatever makes you happy. Wise words, and I love that man. And also too, you know, recently. It's been a while, but, you know, and I wanted you to also, it's also a celebration for you because you, on your YouTube channel, you did pass over a thousand subscribers mm -hmm. and that's a big milestone. Now, I don't care no, who, it, it, some people are like, oh, it's so small. No, it's humongous. How many people can't even try to reach that? It's, it's mm -hmm. a good milestone and you deserve that of the work you put out. And with that too, with that milestone win, it's a reflection too on what you've done, how you've grown and go do a whole 360 about who you are right now. So for the Elliot that started before to the Elliot that's right now, reflection on yourself. What do you see yourself as right now of the work you've done? Man, it's just, uh, you know, again, going back to the kind of the day that kind of that switched it all for me in a sense of uh, just continuing to put out content and you'll eventually find the people that love that come back to your reviews you know, in October, I was at 730 subscribers, and I was at that number for a good four or five months. I was just my, my channel was very stale. It was just at a one spot. You know, fast forward to, um, you know, we're in January of 2020. You know, I'm almost at 2,000 subscribers. So in that time, it was just a matter of, hey, Elliot, just keep pushing, man. Just find your niche. Find, you know, talk about the shows. Bring the passion. Bring the positivity that you bring in all your videos. But just also being consistent. That's another thing, too, is consistency is a big thing. You know, when it comes to, again, as I mentioned earlier, when it comes to this in, <clears throat> social media platform, people have short attention spans. So that if you're not putting out content, they're going to find the next person that will be doing it. So it's just a matter of just staying consistent, staying positive, talking about the things, you know, I love and, and enjoy. And, uh, you know, the growth will come. The, the numbers will come. But right now it's just a matter of I'm having an absolute blast. Uh, interacting with everyone, uh, I read all the comments, uh, I respond to all the comments, and it's just, it, it, it makes the day-to-day -day life a little bit easier when you know you have this uh, community of people that you're building uh, that can uh, that support your content. 100%. And the last thing I got for you is the final thing, and you can just boot out, man, as fast as you can, I promise. Mm -hmm. is now, this is the appreciation end, where we give the love and the gracious of the people who have been by us. So if there's anybody in your life that you want to show love to right now, the floor is yours. Let them hear it. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Again, I brought them up earlier. You know, my family, and I don't have a big family, but it doesn't matter the, the, the size of them, just how important they are to your life. You know, I, my grandma is no longer here with us, but, you know, she's, she's, she's up there looking down on me, and, I, you know, I always appreciate the things she taught me and 
Obviously, my mom is uh, someone that raised me as a single parent that I always appreciate the things she's done for me. Uh, and then, you know, my, my best friend, uh, Morgan, who, who always supports me in regards to my movie stuff, my, my real estate stuff. Uh, then my little guy, my, my, my dog Thor, uh, a little, little, uh, uh, a little, a little, little guy of mine who keeps me going every day. Uh, so those are definitely the people that's closest to me. And then obviously my friends out there that support, support me as well. So I always appreciate everyone that, uh, is, is down for uh, what I got to do. And everybody, that is all you need to know about. And always remember, my name is Ronald E. Smith. This is Elliot Collins, AKA movie files. And y'all, I think we just got real. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you again.